to say that uh, one of the things I, the reason I wanted to put James on was because I heard them rehearsing in the, in the rehearsal studio at Total Refreshment Centre, which if you are a band or an artist and you want to rehearse in a space where you can make as much noise as you want, uh, then uh, the TRC is a great place, uh, contact Capital K uh, and uh, hire out the studio because it's great. Um, the thing I really love about the TRC is that there's just a whole load of music all the time and I get to like hear it sitting in the main space. There's a main space with sofas, it's like being in the living room and there's a kitchen and you just hang out and the, all these different musicians come through and it's like, for me, I find that deeply inspiring and I hope when you come to Cafe Ocho that you get kind of flavour of that of all different kinds of musicians even if you don't like an act you know it's only going to last 30 minutes <laughs> and then you could do chatting getting drunk at the bar which makes everything sound better right and then there'll be someone else to listen to so I think it kind of works out quite well um, but I know that if you are someone who um, comes to Cafe Oto a lot that this is really different so feedback on the, the feedback styles, especially if you don't like it, if there's something we can do that would make every, more people feel welcome. Um, I'm wondering about how the chatting points are working. So we're going to have a break now. Uh, there's a chatting point on that post. That one is about gigs and there's some prompts uh, because people fed back. Some people find conversation harder. Some people, you know, they, like, they find it more difficult. And other people who might want to chat to new people who find it a bit difficult to chat might feel like, mm, I don't really know how to do this. So there are some prompts. So there's one about gigs, there's one about London. Obviously, you can chat about whatever you want, but the idea is that maybe it helps people feel not so alone uh, because I have autism, like uh, the other 700,000 people in the UK that's autistic, and I didn't always have loads of friends, and I didn't always have like a community and I was really isolated. And the thing I could tell you about isolation is isolation makes you really vulnerable. Um, there's 1.5 million people with learning disabilities in the UK, uh, as well as the 700,000 autistic people. Some people have both labels, other people don't, but uh, people are lonely. People get isolated and they're vulnerable to predators. And I have learned from experience that what makes you less, less vulnerable is to be around other people. And it's really important that we find ways to include people that works for everyone. It shouldn't just be, oh, well, I'm just being nice. You know, it should be like, this can work for everybody. Like, we can all benefit from each other. So, talking about benefiting from each other, <laughs> there's a merch table with Ricky. <laughs> Um, it benefits the artists, and what I'd just like to say about the money thing, right? We do get money from the Arts Council, but I, I don't want you to think that, like, the bigger Robert's Rocket gets, the more money I take, because I'm really not motivated by money. I genuinely wanted to create a space where people could come together, and you could hear artists with learning disabilities and autistic artists, and hopefully there are people in the audience who have learning disabilities and autistic people and they feel as welcome as people without learning disabilities or non-autistic people. That's what I wanted to create because I think that if you can create a space like this, then more people will create spaces like this, like it takes somebody to do something. Yeah. That's what I'm about. I don't, I don't care about the money. I get a set fee. I get paid for a couple of days' work. It's probably more than two days' work, to be honest. But I really don't want this project to be about the money. So when you buy Robin's Rocket merch or if you donate to the Wards of Comics, do feel free to take the comics. You don't have to pay for them. If you want to donate a couple of quid, that's lovely. But the point of them is to spread the message of, like, we can all be inclusive conscious. We can all look around our spaces, whether it's our workplace or our friendship group, and we can think, who isn't in this space? How could we welcome those people? What could we do to make them feel more comfortable? And then ask them for feedback. You don't have to do it formally, obviously. Um, but, you know, this is like a demonstration. This is maybe a little bit over the top, but it's kind of deliberately over the top to kind of say, well, this is how you could do it, but obviously you can do it more subtly. It doesn't have to be so in your face. Um, but I want you to take these ideas away with you. I don't own them. I'm I like, yeah, sure, I came up with them, but I want more people to feel included. I, 
I don't want people to feel so isolated. I don't want people to be victims of predators. And I know that there's always going to be predators in the world, but if we can try and get the people that aren't predators to surround everybody else, then it's going to be less likely that people suffer from abuse. And there's a lot of people with learned disabilities and autism who suffer from abuse, and it's not right. There's a lot of people without learned disabilities and autism that also experience abuse. I'm not trying to take away from that. I'm just saying that the more we come together and hang out with each other and learn, really, we're all human. That is it. We're all human. And the more we spend time together and hang out with each other and learn about each other, the less likely it is that people are going to be abused, regardless of what label they have. And I hope that that is a sentiment that will stay with you and that you will take it with you.